Has anybody got a match? Thanks. Now I can light an old gold for a treat instead of a treatment. And listen to Frank Sinatra. Night and day. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, Old Gold Cigarettes, the treasure of them all, presents Songs by Sinatra. And in their best Wednesday go to meet in suits, Andre the Piano Previn, Pied the Pensive Pipers, Axel the Golden Boy Store Doll, and Frank's guest this evening, Jimmy the Schnoz Durante. All returns are in, except, oh yes, Hudson County's own, Mr. S. <laughs> My sugar is so refined She's one of them high-class kind She doesn't wear a hat She wears a chapeau She goes to see a cinema But never a show My sugar is so refined She's got a real high-class mind She never buys a dress It's always a frock She always winds her timepiece up But never her clock she says tomato instead of tomato. She says potato instead of potato. And you should see how she holds a cup of tea with just two fingers while she sticks out three. My sugar is so refined. She's one of them high-class kind. She never shares a kiss. She lets her lips unite. But oh, it feels like kissing, and each kiss is dynamite. I wonder what she thinks of each time I hold her tight. She's so refined. She says banana instead of banana. She says piano instead of piano. You should see how she sits on her settee with cake and coffee balanced on her knee. My sugar is so refined. She's one of them high-class kind. She acts just like her name, it's Mrs. Vanderloon. And though I love my sugar and we're gonna be married soon, I bet that she'll read Shakespeare the whole darn honeymoon. She's very classy, that chick is. Hi, neighbors. <laughs> It's mighty good to be able to rest our voting arm and be with you again around the table in the old back room. The only issue confronting us this evening is, can my old man lick Bing's old man, or will groaning ever replace the horse car? While relatives pass among you with sample ballots, let's sample one of the Pied Piper's best qualifications for the job of best quartet, Pipes Take Office. <laughs> Oh, 
Lewis. When I say there was great kids, I lean on it a little bit. Now, friends, Marvin Miller, the man who, with the words that, Marv. Sometimes I get the feeling there's a new fashion in cigarette smoking. Seems to me people are smoking thermometers and test tubes instead of cigarettes. Well, just think of all you hear about cigarette laboratory tests and medical claims about smoking and throat irritation. Well, to those of you who are still old-fashioned enough to smoke for pleasure, to those of you who'd rather have a treat instead of a treatment, I say try, just try an old gold. But I must warn you, when you smoke an old gold, you are not taking part in a fancy scientific experiment. All you're doing is having a swell time enjoying the finest blend of the finest tobaccos money can buy. Old golds are made by folks who've been associated with the best in quality tobaccos for nearly 200 years. We're tobacco men, not medicine men. We want to give you pleasure, tobacco pleasure. And every modern technique known to tobacco science is concentrated on one thing in an old gold, to give you a cigarette that's absolutely the last word in rich, mellow, deep-smoking enjoyment. Sure, take care of yourself and your throat and everything else. But listen, we're talking about pleasure now. And that's why we say any time you want a treat instead of a treatment, treat yourself to a pack of old golds. Yes, sir, it's as simple as that, neighbors. Any time you want a treat instead of a treatment, oh, geez. <laughs> Friends, now that rumble seats and boys and girls to fill them, too, are coming back, and now that the moon hangs high and every road is a silvery detour past the jukebox, the boys of T.P. Alley are having a haggard time keeping the songs coming to keep America singing. One of the newest and best to come along in many a moon is this one, guaranteed to fill each shell-like ear with tender and glamorous thoughts. Axel? <laughs> Neighbors, we roll out the purple carpet and roll on the Steinway for a lad who is younger than a wolf whistle, 
but older in technique than the V in Virtuoso. He punches the clock out at MGM, which in turn has punched the bell with a new picture called The Yearling. So here he is, Andrew Previn, and Hallelujah. Wonderful, Andre. Well, sir, neighbors, we've stiffed this off as long as we could, but we're outnumbered, out-talked, and we're now about to be outsung. So hide the kiddies and send Pop for some help, because here comes our old pal, Jimmy Durante, in person. Now even when things go wrong, why you... Better, you'll even look better. <laughs> and now for my second number, I'll sing. Night and day, you are the one. Only you beneath the moon and underneath the sun. Stop the music, stop the music, that's enough. Why should I make that song a big hit? <laughs> Good evening, music lovers, and thank you, Mr. Sinatra, for that bewitching introduction. Not at all, Mr. Durante. It's a pleasure to have you here. Your graciousness is only surpassed by your hospitality, Mr. Sinatra. And your geniality, Mr. Durante, is only exceeded by your charm. Why don't you folks go to the movies? Can't you see we want to be alone? <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, James, James, I've heard you sing many times, but you've never been in such fine voice. Everybody's noticed it, Frankie. Why, only last week, Hilda God heard me sing, and now she wants to marry me. Oh, now why should Hilda God want to marry you? Maybe she wants to get herself a last name. <laughs> but that is neither veal nor scallopede. <laughs> Frankie, tonight I feel as happy as a freckle on a schoolboy's nose. Today, MGM informed me that I'm to play the lead in the next Greer Garson picture, and they choose me over Gregory Peck. Oh. <laughs> Jimmy, I can't believe it. Gregory Peck is a great lover. He certainly knows how to kiss a girl. Are you kidding? Why, I can outpeck that Gregory anytime. <laughs> and I say that, and I say that with tongue and mouth, which is a good place to have it. <laughs> That's right, Jim. But tell me, how can they possibly be considering you for that part when I'm on the lot? Now, look, let's face it. You saw me kiss Catherine Grayson in the picture we're making it happen in Brooklyn? Yes. Did you ever see such lip movement before? Yeah, once. Once? Yeah. When? Once, when I gave Lassie a sticky Tootsie Roll. <laughs> now, look, Frankie, you don't want to get into a conversary with me, do you? Why, I'm known as the Samson of San Bidou. And I'll tell you why. 
I was walking down Park Avenue the other day. I was whistling Ginny not a Mia. A fellow who was coming in the opposite direction, he bumped right into Mia. Say, I didn't say nothing. I was going to keep on going. Don't you think he turned around and said, don't you look where you're going? Now I stood aghast as it wasn't my fault. Then he pushed me off the cyber camp to the asphalt. Being a gentleman, I apologized. But he wasn't satisfied. He demanded an autopsy. <laughs> so I ups to him and he ups to me. Then I ups to him and I said... I said it was his fault. He said it was my fault. I said it was his fault. He said, if you don't like it, I'll punch you right in the proboscis. <laughs> I was so mad, I was frotting at the kneecaps. <laughs> so I ups to him, and he ups to me. But I don't do nothing. I just keeps my attitude, see? Then I said, wait a minute, buddy. I know you're pretty tough, and that you're a lumberman. But you can't bulldoze me. And with that, to show him who was boss, I put a chip on my shoulder and I said, knock it off, knock it off. Five minutes later, the chip was still there, but the shoulder was gone. <laughs> so I ups to him and he ups to me. So I goes my way and he goes my way. Well, exhausted and fatigued, I stepped into a nearby restaurant and ordered a pheasant on the glass. I had eaten most of the glass and was getting down to the pheasant. <laughs> when I saw a sign that says, watch your hat and coat, I turns around to watch my hat and coat, and what happens? Somebody stole the pheasant. <laughs> Looking up, I find myself face to face with a westerner, a tough hombre. Sizing me up, he asked me where I hails from. And when I said, Barzi Ranch, Phoenix, Tombstone, Arizona, he hits me with his leather boot, knocks me down, black as my eye, picks me up, knocks me down, picks me up, knocks me down. But I kept smiling through it all. I had a smile. He had his fist in my mouth. <laughs> so I left him to his own resources. Now the scene changes. Three years has elapsed. I've grown a perfect toupee and I've prospered. I'm laying on the beach at Waikiki, just a millionaire on the loose. When I feel somebody tickle me on the nose and a voice singing a lot, Caruse. I remember you. I remember you. You're the fella with the great big smeller. I remember. After three years, who comes back to torment me? Knock the shoulder off McNulty. <laughs> <laughs> so I up to him and he ups to me so I goes my way and he goes the way of all flesh <laughs> Jim that was really great and incidentally you've been singing that song for a long time haven't you yep I introduced it many years ago it was the era of lavender and old lace. Mm -hmm. And looking back, looking back, Frankie, I had a very unhappy childhood. I'll never forget the day my parents weaned me away from my bottle. What a shock for a child. How old were you at the time? 28. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> ridiculous. Well, my childhood wasn't a happy one either. All the kids used to make fun of me because of my buck teeth, you know. But I finally got them straightened out. How? One day I went to school without my mother. <laughs> Frankie. Oh, that's got to go. Frankie. <laughs> Frankie, there's one thing about my childhood I'll never forget. It was Mary, the girl who lived next door. Uh -huh. I'll never forget our first date. We met on the corner under a broken street lamp. <laughs> what a girl. She used to kiss me with her eyes closed. Yes. Then one day she opened them. Yes. I never saw her again. <laughs> but Frank. Oh, how I miss her. If I could only tell you. You relax, Jimmy, and I'll tell you. All right, Frank. Oh, how I miss you tonight. Miss you while lights are low. Oh, how I need you tonight. Then you'll ever 
I was a fool just to roam Leaving you there all alone Oh, my poor heart is aching Please keep it from breaking Oh, how, how I miss you tonight. Ah, Frankie, Frankie. You know, that's what I like about your singing. It comes from the heart. Well, doesn't your singing come from the heart, Jim? Yeah, but it detours through my nose. <laughs> but with orchestrations like you got, Frankie boy... I can sing those ballads, too. Axel, just give me a few fiddles. A flute. I love the birds, the bees, the ever-loving trees and the bees. And it sends you, don't it, Frankie? Because they all love you. Say I love Ah, Frankie, doesn't this song paint a picture? Make believe it's spring. The daffy dills are going daffy. The nightingales are putting on their nighties. And the poinsettias are sitting on their little points. It was in just such a setting that I first met my sweetheart, Elsie Pepperpool. She wasn't much to look at, but she was the grocer's daughter. And you gotta take the bitter with the butter. <laughs> it's with Elsie that I first learned the meaning of goose pimples. You see, Elsie's nose turned up and my nose turned down. And every time we kissed, we locked bumpers. <laughs> now, isn't it better to go through life with a smile and a song than walking around with a face? 11 miles long, I you. now you Don't know you that can't you can't go wrong, like if you start off each day with a song. Are you a cigarette smoker or a guinea pig? That's a strange question, perhaps, but sooner or later, you'll have to face it. Because there sure is a lot of talk about cigarette laboratory tests and such, as if a smoker is a mechanical thing, not a person with tastes. Well, old golds are for cigarette smokers only, not guinea pigs. Old golds are for folks who go in for pleasure. The pleasure of fine tobaccos, marvelously blended. The pleasure of smooth, mellow smoke rolling luxuriously on the tongue. Ah, there's a downright miracle of taste, aroma, and all-round goodness in every old gold cigarette. Try, just try an old gold. Then you'll know what we mean when we say, if you want a treat instead of a treatment, treat yourself to a pack of old golds. Ask for them at your tobacco counters. Look for them in the cigarette vending machine. <laughs> Well, sir, Jimmy, tell me something. <laughs> when you get here, I mean. How are we doing? <laughs> well, this has been most refreshing, Frankie. An evening of song and story around the fire. Well, Jim, we still got a handful of minutes. Maybe you'd like to trample the pedals of the organ while I run up a little tune. Frankie, I ain't got one more swoon left in me. <laughs> but I likes to sit in here. You take me by the hand and show me the kind of memories a guy like me likes to keep room for. <laughs> Well, then. <laughs> All right, Jim. I'm sorry. All right, Jim, let's wander back a ways with this one. Right. 
breathless hush of evening that trembles on the brain of a lovely song. You are the angel glow that lights a star. The dearest things I know It's about getting off time, neighbors. And it's been fun being with you this Wednesday evening spread. Jimmy came over with the kind permission and best wishes of his sponsor, the United Rexall Drug Company. And he's been polite enough to ask me to join him and Gary Moore over on their side of the radio next Friday night. We'll be waiting for you, Frankie. The latch key will be out and we'll make it a treat instead of a treatment. Well, that's mighty old gold of you, Jimmy. <laughs> and now, neighbors, the best of everything in... Put your dreams... For another day And I will take their place In your heart Good night, Mrs. Calabash Next Wednesday and every Wednesday is the night for Songs by Sinatra, presented by P. Lorillard Company, a great name in tobaccos for nearly 200 years, and makers of old gold cigarettes, the treasure of them all. The Frank Sinatra Show is written by Frank Wilson and produced and directed for old gold by Man Holliner. Marvin Miller speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.